Welcome back to U.S. Farm Report this weekend. We're here from the University of Minnesota. We've had a great show so far, a lot of discussion that we're having this weekend, and I'm excited to have a great group of economists with us. We have Professor Ed Usset, as well as Associate, Associate Dean Jolene Hadrick and Dean Brian Bohr joining us today. Ed, I want to start with you. We saw some life in the markets this week, but from last year when we were here to now, we have kind of seen a free fall in these commodity markets. I mean, you look at corn down 90 cents to a dollar since last fall for the harvest price. Soybeans down $3, wheat down a dollar. As you look at the pressure that commodity prices have faced, what do you think has the best chance of a rally next year? Uh, I like the prospects for wheat and corn. Now, I don't want to get anyone wildly bullish, but I, I look at the wheat situation and the uh, the stock situation worldwide is far from burdensome. Uh, uh, we've got this ongoing war in Ukraine. I heard a very interesting term about that from another analyst a couple weeks ago. He, he noted that the market has become comfortably numb about the war in Ukraine. That's and a I good way to put it. Yeah, it, it's kind of crazy. Uh, the U.S. situation, we have... Uh, flat demand and uh, we had a couple of good crops here in Minnesota we're, we're going to have a record spring wheat yield so domestically it doesn't look too good but worldwide I see prospects for for higher wheat prices corn market is doing well I mean domestic demand ethanol is good here I've got my colleagues here one uh, Brian is a livestock person uh, Jolene is a dairy person, and those two markets are doing very well because just yesterday, I think, hogs uh, life of contract highs and their input costs, corn and soybean meal, are down. So they're doing well. So demand for corn domestically, even export demand doing well. Ethanol demand is keeping pace. And uh, so I feel good about corn. Soybeans, uh, I don't want to get into that. Not we, so much. We've got issues there. Jolene, let's talk about dairy, because price is much better than where we were a year ago. Yet talk about volatility in the milk markets. How have dairy producers kind of weathered that volatile storm? Yeah, I feel like dairy producers, like their norm is volatile milk prices. They're they're used to it swinging one way or another. Like Ed mentioned, uh, September was one of our highest um, milk prices in the past year and a half, which is always welcomed relief for our dairy producers, especially when we head into this time of the year where we see demand increasing with the holidays, kids back in school, all of those things really help that market. Um, where most of our dairy farms are trying to figure out how to weather that storm is looking at their cost of production. So they are getting some relief with the commodity prices that Ed mentioned. But that cost of production is around $19 to $20 per hundredweight. And if that milk price is between $22 to $23, that's still a pretty tight margin for them to recover on. Dean, let's get into let's get into the demand uh, piece a little bit. When you look at some of these possible new areas of demand, specifically sustainable aviation fuel, I didn't realize that University of Minnesota actually played a role in SAF. Yeah, we have, and there is there is demand growing there, of course, and, and traditionally ethanol, of course, is a big piece driver of demand. But as we're looking forward, and one of the things the University of Minnesota has done is we've looked at new crops, because when you think about carbon and carbon credits and some of the things coming on there, there's scope one, which is the actual production of ethanol or, or sustainable aviation fuel. And then there's scope two, which is how are you sourcing that to the corn crops and so on. So this contribution to how are we finding new and novel ways to do that, to both lower what the, the airlines, so Delta just flew their first sustainable aviation fuel flight out of Minneapolis-St. Paul, and looking at how do you bring that into a commercialized framework, right, to get this, the, the fuel into the system, um, to reduce their goal, they're trying to meet their goals for their credits, um, and be able to do that in a way that we can use across all crops. I think that market growing is these, these promises to be kept by the airline industry yeah. to make those moves. So that's where we'll see, I think, some real growing demand and innovation around how we achieve that. All right. Well, our discussion here for the University of Minnesota is just getting started. We need to take a quick break, and then we'll have much more right here on U.S. Farm Report. Woo!